Then it says, so let's see, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Amma My friend and colleague, President of the National House of Chief, Yaho Yaji II. Dr. Ennis Adesanya, Governor of the Central Bank. My son, Minister of Finance, Dr. Mohammed Amin. Guys, another junior one, son, Honorable Samuel. All the members who are on the high days, I can't mention everybody's name. I sat here and to listen carefully to every speaker. The advantage you have is speaking last, is you get a lot of information. I don't need to rehash the benefits and the data and the numbers and why this state of the art is important in our economic growth. I'll tell you a story. Somebody said when we came from the old country to this place, when we arrived here, we left everything behind when the Arabs were chasing us to take us into slavery. When we got here, we found that we were cut off in the south by the sea. In the north, by the desert. On our right and left were dense forests in this tropical land full of gold and minerals. Our forebears took care of this thing for us to get here. And if you look at the data, we should not be poor. Africa does not need to be poor. We have much more diversity than any other continent. And yet, sadly, we're the poorest. What a pack. And we're poor not because we don't want to get better. We're poor because we were exploited. So when I got here and listened to all the speakers, I just took a big sigh for leave and said, finally, finally, we're here. <laughs> like I told you, I just put my speech aside because everything that had to be said, it was said. We are doing this thing to improve future generations. Three things. We need to own our resources. Everything we're talking about is if we don't own our resources, we will never be able to achieve what we want to achieve. Another story. 1844, a guy named George Harrison discovered gold in Johannesburg. At the same time, we also had a boise. And because, like Vice President said, we went to sleep. They built their gold within Johannesburg. They controlled their gold within Johannesburg. Many years, hundred years later, Johannesburg has become a major city of what remains a metropolitan village. Many years since we were blessed, this continent has been rich. And yet, we hold the headquarters of poverty in right here. That has to be changed. Leadership leads change. And today, I am just glad that leaders of our country found the need to build this. All of us. I grew up in a mining town in Africa. Those guys who were sick in operations, I hear, are from Tapa. There are people who came from Pristia, 
and undermining areas. Their communities have been devastated over the years. All we're doing here is to make sure that we strengthen our hands when we go to bargain with the one bank of the island. We own this. When we do that, we then begin to negotiate not out of fear, and we're not going to be fearful to negotiate. We have something to stand on. Our bargaining power will increase. Then, I have researched all the miners in the world who go underground to work. I have come to a conclusion that there's something wrong with your weakness here. Gold has universal parts. If it's 12, if it's an ounce, and it's sold $1,000 here in Ghana, the same thing in Canada, the same thing in Australia, the same thing everywhere. Better yet, when you look at those countries who work, and the ground workers, they are paid. What their salaries are, is nothing compared to what the people receive here in Ghana. That must change. Again, I am from the rural area. You know, we live in rural Ghana. When this country was built, it was built in a charter of a nation state. We have long behaved like we're a city state. Everything is in Accra. Everything is in Accra, whether you like it or not. Every day there's one set traffic coming from the north to the south. This may allow our country to receive the revenue where they will be able to build infrastructure to open up our country. And as we do that, we're connecting disadvantaged people and their communities to economic opportunities. We will this year now, Mr. Vice President. I'd like to see a day when the refinery and refinery is built around Obuasi and Papa so that the people who live can have an opportunity and decently. So. There are 70% of our people who live in rural Ghana who are wallowing in poverty, not because they want to be poor, because opportunities have not reached them. And how best can you bring opportunity to people in Tava and the Pratia when a refinery like this is built right there locally? We need to change that. And it takes leadership, like what we have now to bring up our changes. Shouldn't be petrified to change. Our people and our country deserve better. And I'm sure that all these gallant men, learned people, will agree with me. We cannot build a strong economy that excludes 70% of our people. We go nowhere with that. So as we build this thing here, and we're not going to hear that crap, I agree, but in the future, we are going to just ask that things must come to look at what the people who God blessed them to be where they are to enjoy their natural resources. The western region is by far the richest region in Ghana. The last time I checked, they are the poorest. What the white folks did to Africa is what we're doing to our own self. We need to bring development to our people, build the infrastructure, open up Ghana, employ people, and do that. I have always said, I don't understand what the Forestry Commission is doing in Accra. But what the Minister of Agriculture is in Accra. Why the Minister of Natural Resources is doing Accra? We can, we can open up. And we open up with the leadership like this. I know that you know what I'm talking about. We need to spread the opportunities. Because without the opportunity, no one, no one goes to So let it just work a little bit about the country. So these guys who are in Tampa will have to come here to secure things here. We can bring it there. Thank you very much.